Hi, in this session, I'm going to show you how we can manage uh, our to-do to list uh, software to have uh, GTD support because the videos I've seen online on YouTube doesn't really cover GTD fundamentals, just uh, tips and tricks here and there. So uh, hopefully this video is going to solve this. So the first thing I will do is that I will open Todoist and in the filter section, uh, you can see that I have a bunch of things among which I have the inbox and today and overdue and those are things that I need to get done today and things that I missed to do the other days before. And we have next and those are, are actionable items. And then we have mm -hmm. tomorrow, which is uh, everything that's need to get uh, done tomorrow and then scheduled, which is something that needs to get done in the future after two days from now. And we have someday and waiting when you're waiting for someone so you can process items. And I'm going to show you each one of these items, how I did it. So uh, let me go to manage filters. And for inbox, all I did the query was to say P call inbox. And this means the project is inbox. And the default, uh, this is the default folder that is already, um, it's already described in Todoist by default. Then for today and overdue, uh, I did write this query here, which says um, today, comma, overdue. And it basically grabs every task that's uh, due today or the days before today that you missed to finish before. Uh, and you put comma in between and you, you need to put, to put those par uh, parentheses. But I, I'm going to upload these items for you in the description box so you don't have to worry. And then we have the next. And basically that's uh, the view all query. So all you have to type is to type view all. And then let me show you, there's also tomorrow, which is just the query of tomorrow. And I also have scheduled and the way I did it is like this. Let me show you. So basically, uh, the first thing is we have it, uh, we have a query called no due date. And when you add, uh, you know, an exclamation mark um, uh, before it, then it means uh, not no due date, which is which is actually yes due date. So in other terms, I'm telling to do is uh, to grab me the tasks that have a due date. And as you can see, there's a num percent here. Uh, it's the same logic. And uh, if we write in today, that it means today. But w since we have the ex you know the exclamation mark before today, then uh, it has a due date, but it's not today and not tomorrow. And lastly, not overdue. So again, this query means that uh, I'm asking to do is to grab me all the tasks that have a due date that's not for today and not overdue and not for tomorrow. So it's basically starting two days uh, after the date you're viewing. And then lastly, I think those are uh, easy to guess, the someday and uh, the waiting are both uh, what we call tags in Todoist. So for someday, I just say when I assign a task, a tag of someday, then please grab it, grab it to me. And when I assign a task uh, waiting, it means uh, Please grab the tasks that I'm waiting for someone to complete before I can take action accordingly. And as a good tip, let me click down manage. I'm going to go ahead and have another screen where I put in a widget from Todoist because this is very important. Let me show you. This is on Android. I have no idea how it works on the iPhone, but let me try. So I'm going to select Todoist and we'll select this widget. And it's going to ask me, which view do I want to see by default? Just click on filters and type in, let's say, today in overview. overview. And I'm going to expand it a bit and click. Okay, and there we go. So I have now on my screen a list of uh, dues for today and the overdues. So if I click this, 
it's going to show me this nice list, which is more like a GTD list, where it asks me to, you know, to switch between views. And those are basically filters, but you can easily access them if you have a widget like this on your home screen. So I can just type in, click on the next and see everything nicely aligned with the title of each project and they're grouped by project with a description of each actionable item. And the same thing goes for the other items in the list. Another handy one could be to have the project view because I know some people will still want to see what kind of tasks they have in each project. And in this case, uh, let me have another widget. I'm going to select the same type, which is the task list. And by default, I'm just going to expand this and click the rush projects. So, okay. So now I can switch between, when I click on this arrow, uh, I can actually switch between projects, as you can see. So I can just click anywhere to see the tasks accompanied with each, with each one of these projects. And it's going to always display for me the projects that are active right now. Because I initially have selected a project, so every time I click this drop-down area, it's going to show me the list of pro projects. Whereas in this view, when I click this drop-down arrow, it's going to show me the list of filters. I really, really hope this was helpful to you. The filters will, will, will still work great on the web. And you can basically have the default views to one of the filters. And then it's going to be open by default in the web also. But I think it's so handy on, on Android, for example. I hope that it's available on the iPhone. I have no idea, but you can tell me. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, you can definitely tweak this in different ways, like having things. Like if you'd like to have overdue and to die separated, then it's okay. You can do so. Uh, but in my case, I prefer to have the overdue and to die in one field. And you can actually tweak it the way you like. And uh, those, those are actually the defaults, but it, it's totally up to you how you use it. And please let me know if you, if you use a better way. Please share it with, with me in the comment box below. And thank you so much and have a nice day.